Yep. Okay. Um, Abu Musuza is my name. Uh, Uganda, born, bred, raised, educated. Um, I am also a former member of ISEC. Uh, managers in ISEC that I got um, a lot of exposure to a lot of leadership, um, leadership skills, um, but also to a network of people uh, that uh, inspired me quite a bit. Um, I I am a graduate of social work and social administration, but I did not, uh, I have never practiced uh, social work and social administration per se. Um, that's because while I was working uh, with ISEC, mm. I got exposed to the whole space of social entrepreneurship. Okay. Um, and I picked up great interest. Um, mm. And so I actually ended up working with Ashoka, which is one of the uh, early founders of the space of social entrepreneurship, mm. uh, where I worked for six years. Okay. Three of them in Uganda and three of them in Nairobi as the director for East Africa. Um, and after which I, I left to found Village Energy. Okay. Yeah. So that's, so that's how you ended up in social business? Um, yeah, I ended up in social in social entrepreneurship. I was introduced to the concept um, while I was working with Ashoka. That's mm. when I got exposed to the fact that there are people who actually go out and design um, and design businesses mm. that design businesses that are geared towards developing, you know, towards advancing yeah. advancing society or towards solving a specific social problem or like mm-hmm. health, education, even human rights, you know, access to information, all these kinds of things. So that's how I got exposed to the, to the field of okay. social entrepreneurship and social business. Awesome. So what's your current role and what are the types of tasks that you do at Village Energy? Well, I am a co-founder and director mm. uh, at Village Energy. Uh, we founded Village Energy in August of 2009. Mm. That's after I left, uh, I left Ashoka. Um, and currently my role is director, right? Mm. Um, and I'm more in the operation side of the business, human resource, finance. Yeah. Uh, marketing, you know, sales. That's that's my portfolio, mm. um, and that's that's uh, that's what I take care of, yeah. basically. Mm. Okay, so what excites you most about your job? Um, I think what excites me is the whole challenge um, of basically. Uh, developing solutions that address social problems. So mm-hmm. the one thing you have to understand about Village Energy is that we we are changing our thinking in the company. Yeah. Um, and what we are changing is the way we understand solar. So we are predominantly a solar company. right? Um, so what we're doing is we're moving away from looking at solar as simply an end product that you sell to someone. right? That giving someone a solar system that can give them two lights and a phone charger is the end game, right? What we're looking more now is the in context within which this person lives. And we're trying to look at development issues within this context. What are the development challenges? What are the critical social um, services that need to be de- delivered in these communities that are either non-existent at all or that are insufficiently de- delivered? Mm. And then the question we ask ourselves is how can we use our expertise in energy, in renewable energy, to finally find a solution of how that can be delivered. Mm -hmm. So what excites me is the challenge of sitting down and saying, okay, guys, there's an issue in agriculture, right, and irrigation. So how can we take on this challenge? How can we deliver, develop a product that will finally get thousands of farmers into Mm -hmm. the movement of using irrigation, right? So then Mm -hmm. the whole process of designing, you know, a product incorporating you know renewable energy using solar to basically you know advance the whole space of irrigation so that daily um, mind frame of you know thinking about development issues connecting that to what we do as our core business and trying to develop you know something that will finally you know advance a lot of mm-hmm. so we, we do that for health education agriculture you know access to information mm-hmm. all these kinds of things so that's okay. what excites me the most. Okay. So uh, well, actually, you, you mentioned something about the challenges that you face, and for sure, every impact entrepreneur faces mm-hmm. his own challenges. Um, mm-hmm. Are there any specific challenges you face at Village Energy? I think, I think it's not something unique to Village Energy. I think mm-hmm. it's it's something that a lot of social businesses face, um, because many social businesses are mostly motivated by solving a specific social problem, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. 
but there's another side of making sure that you have a business that works. Yeah. Right? Because you can't have one or the other. Mm. You can't simply have a business that works mm. but not address a social problem because then your relevance will run out. Mm. Yet you also cannot be so passionate about social impact that you forget about the business. Because if you mm. don't have a business that works, you'll have nothing that is driving the social impact. Mm. So the challenge is balancing the two, right? And the and the biggest challenge that I faced, right, that we're now, you know, trying to address is the fact that we did not have business expertise. Right? If you start, you know, a social business, you're motivated to address the energy crisis in Africa. Mm -hmm. But you don't have the good business, you know, As skill, you, start, right? you don't yeah. understand balance sheets, you know, profit and loss statements, and if you don't understand those, you can't run a good business, right? So that was a challenge. Mm -hmm. right? Um, a, a very practical way I can I can explain that challenge is at one point when we were pricing our product, right? We only thought about the cost of, of goods of putting together the product and the margin, right? Mm. As profit, mm. but we did not ask ourselves where do our operational expenses come from, right? So we had not calculated the operational expenses as part of, 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 of the cost of goods, yeah. of, you know, of, of, of the product. Mm. So very very early on, you know, that was a business that that was the issue and. We basically were consistently working at, at a loss, right? Because we were taking all the profit and putting it back into operation expenses, right? So that that whole balance between social impact mm. and running a good business is, you know, uh, is a major challenge. Okay. Uh, in in uh, uh, the the other the other challenges is distribution. Right? Um, distribution is is a big thing. Um, understanding that. Understanding the market, first of all, um, that you're working mostly, most social businesses work at the bottom of the pyramid, right? So uh, you need to find a way of delivering a product in a model that works for this kind of, right? So you're looking at, you're looking at a market that doesn't have upfront money, right? That here is $200, you know, to buy this social, this, this product, right? Mm. But they have it in tickets, they can pay it for you in, to you in, you know, in yep. you know little installments. Mm. So you need to find a pricing model. You need to find a distribution model. You need to find a product model, right? All of those three that work in a way that will allow a lot more communities to access this product, mm. right? Mm. Uh, so if it's a source, if it's a solar system, right? How are you going to deliver it, right? How are you going to design the product that? you know, will not necessarily require someone to pay upfront, right? But they can pay for it as a service, right? So for example, also a practical way is that we designed this solar system that provided two lights and a phone charger in a house for a low income household, right? Mm -hmm. So this household has to pay like $112 to, you know, if they're going to pay upfront for it and take it. Mm -hmm. But early on, we discovered that they don't have that money upfront, right? So then we went back and the question was, what do we do? Right. So we took a financial approach to it, where we are working with microfinance institutions, mm. right, to basically provide them credit. But we also took a technological approach to it, right? We're like, okay, let's redesign the, pro the product, right? What if we took away all the solar panels? Find an entrepreneur in a community, and the entrepreneur basically, his role is to provide the service of charging, mm. right? Mm. So the house has a battery, the lights, the phone charger, but what they don't have is a solar panel at the top of the house, right? Okay. So make everything plug and play. Right. So when the battery is running out, it signals to the you know to the end user, and then they unplug everything, take the battery to the entrepreneur who charges it for them, and for that they pay five hundred shillings. Five hundred Ugandan shillings. Yes, so five hundred Ugandan shillings. Mm. So that way they don't have to make you know a large capital outlay, but they have to pay five hundred shillings every three to four days, and still get the product. Right. So mm. the challenge was basically remodeling, right, restructuring everything. You know, partnering with financial, so there's a lot more work to do, right, in a social business mm. than a direct business. Where I mean, you got you advertise, people come and buy the phone, they take it, they mm. use it, you know, upfront money. Here, there's no upfront money. You know, the areas are far flung, right? You know, so the distribution is also a bit more challenging. Mm. Right? So that, those are some of the major challenges that we faced. Mm. Um, the okay, uh, you mentioned uh, quite a number of them, but are there any specific solutions you came up? With? Well, like I said, the first solution we came up with was, you know, we have to restructure our product, mm. right? Uh, don't think of it only like, oh, why don't we introduce them to microfinance institutions, they give them the money that they need, 
they pay us upfront, you know, and then they basically pay. With microfinance institutions, there are other challenges as well. Right. Like, for example, interest rates are a big issue. Debit right? right. Which means the end user is actually paying higher, you know, a higher price than the $112, right? Mm. So we decided, in the meantime, why don't we do a technological approach to it? We provide a product where an entrepreneur actually doesn't own it, but still benefits you know, mm. uh, gets the, the benefits. Mm. You know, they get clean energy, better light, in more rooms at the same time, and also charge their phones at home, right? And only by paying 500 shillings, yep. right? Mm. So that's what we've partly done. Uh, the other thing is, uh, in terms of the, you know, we, we basically, in we are part of the Acumen Fund. Um, I am an Acumen Fund fellow. Um, and we've, we've basically learned, you know, a little bit about... Um, about running a good business, mm. you know, cash flow statements, you know, and all the tools you need to basically make good business decisions. Um, we've had issues with human resource as well, the challenge of human resource. Mm. We as a small startup company don't have enough money to pay for, you know, like the super qualified people, right? So what we've done is we run most of our product programs uh, through an internship program, right? I think where we basically bring on people as, an, as interns, we don't have to you know, pay a very high salary, mm. uh, but then we get still quality human resource, right? So uh, for every program, we basically bring in someone, you know, they sit and develop the program, you know, and then they run it. Um, and as we grow, then we'll basically start looking at more permanent, uh, more permanent. So, so we've addressed the human resource um, issue um, wholly through uh, our partnership with ISEC. Okay, yeah. perfect. So, as we conclude, Abu, do you have any tips for young people who want to work in social business? I think everyone should start thinking about social business, mm. you know, as, as their next career move. If you look at for-profit businesses, mm. right, the purely profit businesses, mm. they are competing in the smallest part of the market. Right? Some analysts say that that is only what you see is only 25% of the market. The 75% of the market is actually you know, the bottom of the pyramid, mm. where social businesses operate. Right? Um, and I think this is the reason why, because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of market to cover, there's mm. a lot of space to cover, there are a lot of issues to cover um, in, uh, you know, in society. Um, so first and foremost, very, very, uh, very seriously, think about, you know, doing a career in social business. Um, two, don't come in with one or the other, right? Don't come in thinking, okay, I'm going for social impact, mm. right? Or, okay, I'm coming to do business. It has got to be both, right? It cannot be one or the other, yep. right? If you take one and not the other, everything will crumble, right? So think about it as a whole thing, right? Think about the bottom of the pyramid as customers, mm -hmm. not as helpless people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So for example, yes, you know, they have to spend 30% of their incomes on kerosene every day, which you know, turns around and causes, you know, health problems, which then requires them to spend more money in, in health centers mm -hmm. um, or it burns their property. It doesn't mean you come in with this wall, oh, these guys are, you know, very, you know, poor or, you know, they need help. Actually, for me, that is a sign of resilience, right? They, they are strong enough, you know, to sustain, you know, that amount of money, mm -hmm. which, you know, some, you know, middle class households don't have to spend because they are better technologies. Yeah. Um, what they are is a great opportunity, right? Uh, to basically give them the tools, you know, to further, you know, advance their, you know, their lives. So look at it, you know, look at them as, you know, uh, as a customer. Mm. Look at them treat them as someone who, you know, needs your service and deliver it in the best way possible, right? And in the manner that that understands. But generally, for people who are coming into the social business. Starting a business is not easy, right? Yet it's not as hard as they say, right? Uh, my advice, therefore, would be for young people is the greatest resource that you have is time, right? You're young, you still don't have, you know, like all these family commitments where you have to, you know, uh, take care of kids, you know, take care of a household. Uh, so you have a greater uh, opportunity to take more risks. Right? Take mm. risks, fail, you know, uh, the impact is not, you know, as much, right? 
uh, you don't you know lose you know too much right mm. so go out there explore you know discover you know try things will explode in your face build them back you know that's that's basically um, how it how it goes but also you need to know that you actually start really doing business when you become popular right mm. so a lot of young people think that or believe that the hardest part of doing business is the startup phase. You know, that point where you're not known, you're trying, you're rejected, you know, you run around, yes, you do a lot of legwork, but it is nothing compared to when you actually start getting popular. When people finally start knowing that, okay, these guys deliver good quality health, you know, at a very affordable price, mm -hmm. and they have this, you know, they have this proven model, successful model of building a chain of, you know, low-income clinics in low-income communities. Once they know that you know how to do that, once the market learns that I can get good health services at an affordable price at this clinic, that is when the, when the business starts. Mm -hmm. Because at any one time, someone needs your product, mm -hmm. right? You have a lot of pressure because the demand is so high that now you have to figure out how you take care of it and you cannot disappoint you know, the customer. Anyone. That is when, you know, the real nights you know, upstart. That is when mm -hmm. you work day and night to make sure that you deliver, right? The okay. startup is, you know, okay, but when you become really popular, then that's when the real hard work starts, right? So don't relax after finally, you know, this impact investor says, wow, this is a good model. Mm -hmm. I'm going to invest, you know, a million dollars in your, you know, in your business. That is when the work starts because now, you know, you have to prove you know, that your model can hold mm -hmm. for the long haul. So that, those would be the, the few pieces of advice okay. that I could um, give to young people. One, mm -hmm. it, is the, it is the space to come into. Two, the greatest resource you have is time. And three, don't relax after you've come out of your startup phase. Mm -hmm. The work really begins when you start, you know, when the wheels start moving, you know, and your work, uh, and your work begins to. Perfect. Thank you very much, Abu. Sure thing. It was a pleasure. Hi.